A Doll's House, Act 2, Next Scene. Nora, Krogstad, and Miss Lind. Nora, to the maid. And he is standing, waiting in the kitchen? Yes, he came up the back stairs. But didn't you tell him no one was in? Yes, but it was no good. He won't go away? No, he says he won't until he has been seen by you, ma'am. Well, let him in, but quietly. Helen, you mustn't ask anything about it to anyone. It is a surprise for my husband. Yes, ma'am, I quite understand. And she leaves. Nora, this is a dreadful thing to, that's going to happen. It will happen in spite of me. No, 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 it can't happen. It shan't happen. She bolts the door of, Hel of Helmer's room. The maid opens the hall door for Krogstad and shuts it after him. He is wearing a fur coat, high boots, and a fur cap. Nora, advancing towards him, speak low. My husband is at home. No matter about that. What do you want from me? An explanation of something. Make haste then. What is it? You know, I suppose, that I have got my dismissal. I couldn't prevent it, Dr. Mr. Krogstad. I fought as hard as I could on your side, but it was no good. Does your husband love you so little then? He knows what I can expose you to, and yet he ventures. How can you suppose that he has any knowledge of any sort? I didn't suppose so at all. It would not be the least like Torvald Helmer, Helmer to show so much courage. Mr. Krogstad, a little respect for my husband, please. Certainly, all the respect he deserves. But since you have kept the matter so carefully to yourself, I make bold to suppose that you have a little clearer idea than you had yesterday of what is actually is that you have done. More than you could ever teach me. Yes, such a bad lawyer as I. What is it you want from me? Only to see how you were, Mrs. Helmer. I've been thinking about you all day long. A mere cashier, a, a quill driver, uh, well, a man like me even has a little of what is called feeling, you know? Show it, then think of my little children. Have you and your husband thought of mine? But never mind about that. I only wanted to tell you that you need not take this matter too seriously. In the first place, there will be no accusation made on my part. No, of course not. I am sure of that. The whole thing can be, be arranged amicably. There is no reason why anyone should know anything about it. It will remain a secret between us three. My husband must never get to know anything about it. How will you be able to prevent it? Am I to understand that you pay the balance that is owing? No, not at present. Or perhaps that you have some expedient for raising the money soon? No expedient that I mean to make use of. Well, in any case, it would have been of no use to you. If you stood there with ever so much money in your hand, I would never part with your bond. Tell me what purpose you mean to put in. I shall only preserve it. Keep it in my possession. No one who is not concerned in the matter shall have the slightest hint of it, so that if the thought of it has driven you to any desperate resolution, it has. If you had it in your mind to run away from your home, I had. Or even something worse. How could you know that? Give up the idea. How did you know I had thought 
the, of that. Most of us think of that first. I did too, but I hadn't the courage. No more had I. In a tone of relief, no, that isn't it. You hadn't the courage either. No, I haven't. I haven't. Besides, it would have been a good piece of folly. Once the first storm at home is over, I have a letter for your husband in my pocket. Telling him everything? In as lenient a manner as I possibly could. He mustn't get the letter. Tear it up. I will find some means of getting money. Excuse me, Mrs. Helmer, but I think I told you just now. I am not speaking of what I owe you. Tell me what sum you are asking my husband for, and I will get the money. I am not asking your husband for a penny. What do you want, then? I will tell you. I want to rehabilitate myself, Mrs. Helmer. I want to get on, and in that your husband must help me. For the last year and a half, I have not had a hand in anything dishonorable. Amid all that time, I had been struggling in most restricted circumstances. I was contented to work my way up step by step. Now I am tuned out. I am not going to be satisfied with merely being taken into favor again. I want to get on, I tell you. I want. I was content to work my way up by step by step, but now I am turned out, and I am not going to be satisfied with merely being taken into favor again. I want to get on, I tell you. I want to get into the bank again, in a high, higher position. Your husband must make a place for me. That he will never do. He will. I know him. He dare not protest. And as soon as I am in there again with him, then you will see. Within a year, I shall be the manager's right hand. It will be Nils Krogstad and not Torvald Helmer who manages the bank. That's a thing you will never see. Do you mean that you will? I have courage enough for it now. Oh, you can't frighten me. A fine, spoiled lady like you. You will see. You will see. Under the ice, perhaps? down into the cold, coal black water, and then in the spring to float up to the surface, all horrible and unrecognizable with your hair fallen out? You can't frighten me, nor you me. People don't do such things, Mrs. Helmer. Besides, what use, what use would it be? I should have him completely in my power, all the same. Afterwards, when I am no longer have you forgotten that it is I who have the keeping of your reputation? She stands speechlessly looking at him. Well, now I have warned you. Do not anything selfish. When Homer has had my letter, I shall expect a message from him. And be sure you remember that it is your husband himself who has forced me into such ways as this again. I will never forgive him for that. Goodbye, Mrs. Helmer and he exits through the hall. Goes to the hall door, opens it slightly, and listens. He is going. He is not putting the letter in the box. Oh, no, 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 that's impossible. Opens the door by degrees. What is that? He is standing outside. He is not going downstairs. Is he hesitating? Can he? A letter drops into the box. Then Krogstad's footsteps are heard until they die away and he goes downstairs. Nora utters a stifled cry and runs across the room to the table of the sofa and a short pause. In the letterbox? She steals across the hall door. There, it lies. Torvald, Torvald, there is no hope for us now. Miss Lind comes in from the room on the left, crossing the dress. There, I can't see anything more to mend now. Would you like to try it on? In a hoarse whisper, Christine, come here. Throwing the dress down on the floor. What is the matter with you? You look so agitated. Come here. Do you see that letter? There, look. 
You can see it through the glass in the letter box. Yes, I see it. That letter is from Mr. Krogstad. Nora, it was Krogstad who lent you the money? Yes, and now Torvald will know all about it. Believe me, Nora, that's the best thing for both of you. You don't know at all. I forged a name. Good heavens. I only want to say this to you, Christine. You must be my witness. Your witness? What do you mean? What am I to? If I should go out of my mind, and it might easily happen, Nora, or if it, anything else happens to me, anything, for instance, that might prevent me from my being here, Nora, Nora, you are quite out of your mind. And if it should happen that there were some, someone who would wanted to take all the responsibility, all the blame, you understand? Yes, yes. But how come, how can you suppose? Then you must be my witness. That is not true, Christine. I am not out of my mind at all. I am in my right senses now, and I tell you, no one else has known anything about it. I, and alone, did the whole thing. Remember that? I will indeed, but I don't understand all of this. How should you understand it? A wonderful thing is going to happen. A wonderful thing? Yes, a wonderful thing. But it is so terrible, Christine. It mustn't happen. Not for all the world. I will go at once and see Krogstad. Don't go to him. He will do you some harm. There was a time when I would gladly do anything for my sake. He? Where does he live? How should I know? Yes, here is his card. But the letter, the letter. Nora, Nora, what's that? What do you want? Don't be frightened. We are not coming in. You have locked the door and you are trying on your dress. 